Okay, today I'm going to be taking on the question that has been taking the internet by storm lately and causing the best of friends to become the bitterest enemies when they argue about it. Is water wet? So to me this seems like a pretty simple answer, but I've heard some pretty good arguments on either side. So I'm going to finish this question once and for all and show you if water is really wet or not. Okay, we can all agree that if something is not wet, it's dry. So dry is the lowest level of wetness that you can have. And then after that, if something is not quite dry, we can call it damp. So when something is damp, it has a little bit of water in it, but it's not really wet yet. And then after damp, I'm gonna put moist. And then finally after moist, I'm gonna put wet. But I'm not gonna stop there. After we say something is wet, if it gets even more wet, we have different terms to describe it too. For example, when something is more wet than it was before, we'll call it soaking wet, or even sopping wet. And it even keeps going from there. From there, instead of sopping wet, you can even get to dripping wet. So dripping wet is when something is so wet, the water is just dripping off of it. So all of these are just words, and they're not very scientific. But we can all agree that this list goes from very little water on something to a lot of water on something. And we could be talking about toilet paper here, we could be talking about sand, anything we're talking about going from dry to dripping wet to even further than that. But what does this have to do with water being wet? Well, let me show you what I mean. So to start off, I'm actually not gonna start off talking about water, but I'm gonna talk about something that we can get wet. For example, this toilet paper here. And you'll see why I'm talking about this as we go along. So we're all used to talking about something being wet. So that's why I wanna start off with this toilet paper here. We need an object that can be wet. So first let's weigh our toilet paper here. So this toilet paper weighs about two grams. So my whole system here, my toilet paper, the air around it in the cup, we're gonna call it all dry right now. Okay, so let's step through this list here. So for dry, we have 0% water. Next, let's make this toilet paper damp. So to make it damp, I'm just gonna get my fingers wet. And I just got it a little bit wet here. So I put on a few micrograms of water. Still feels pretty dry, but it feels a little bit damp. Just kind of soaked it in. So overall, because it was only a few micrograms and the toilet paper weighed two grams, so the dampness is still about 0% water. So now let's make it moist. So to make it moist, I'm gonna put on about two and a half milliliters of water. Okay, so I think we'd all agree this is some moist toilet paper. It's not quite wet yet, there's still some dry spots, but it's definitely moist. So my moist toilet paper, I put on 2.5 milliliters and the toilet paper itself weighed two grams, and water is about one gram per milliliter. So that means that two and a half grams out of four and a half grams is water in this system now. So just to make something moist, it is now about 55% water. Now let's get the toilet paper wet. So to get the toilet paper wet, I'm gonna put on another five grams. Okay, this is definitely wet toilet paper now. Okay, so wet toilet paper is now 79% water. And then soaking wet and sopping wet are kind of the same thing. I'm gonna add another two and a half milliliters. I'm gonna go with soaking and sopping wet are such that you could probably wring it out. You could probably wring it out and water will come out of it. So that's soaking or sopping wet. So these two are around 83% water. And then here's where it gets interesting. The next one is dripping wet. Okay, so dripping wet is interesting because now we've stopped talking about the toilet paper as the system because when something is dripping wet, it means the water is just coming off of it. So it's dripping with water. When something is dripping wet, it's really wet. So now let's make this dripping wet. So I'm gonna add on another 10 milliliters of water. So, th so this is literally dripping wet right now, right? So I can get the water that came off of it, pick it up. Actually, it's not quite dripping wet yet. It's able to hold that much water. 
So let's add another 10 milliliters. So now this is dripping wet. You can see when I pick it up, the water just drips off of it. So this system here is dripping wet. So dripping wet, I ha now have a total of 30 milliliters of water in there. So that leaves me with 93% water. Okay, so then after dripping wet, what if we want to get it even more wet? Well, let me go ahead and put the rest of our water in here. So now this is really dripping wet. So there's not really a word for it, so I'm just gonna say really dripping wet. So this system is now really dripping wet. So I'm gonna call this RDW, really dripping wet. So my really dripping wet system was 97% water. Okay, now how about we make it really, really dripping wet? So we just wanna get this really, really wet, as wet as we can. So how about I fill my whole cup up? So this is really, really dripping wet, RRDW. And that is, that is now 99.5% water. You might be able to see where I'm going with this now. Okay, so why stop there? Let's make it even more wet. So now our system is even more wet than the previous system. And right now we're at 99.993% water. So here's where it should all come together for you. You can see that the more wet the system is, that means the more water that is in the system. So as we add water to the system, it becomes more and more wet. Or to say it a different way, the less of something else you have in a system, the more wet it is. The less toilet paper that was in my cup compared to water, the more wet my system was. So if I were to keep doing this exercise, I could next pour this into a swimming pool. And you wouldn't even be able to really notice the toilet paper after that. I mean, it'd still be in there, but overall your system is almost 100% water now. And then you could pour that swimming pool into the ocean. So the point is, the more water you have in a system, the more wet your system is. So based on my actual data here with words that we actually use, we can put that in a graph format. On the y-axis is our percent water, and on the x-axis is our wetness level. So the higher our fraction of water is in the system, the more wet something is. And what's the highest you can get on this graph here as it asymptotes is 100% pure water. And this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is my proof that water is wet. You can easily see it in the plot here that the more pure water we have, the more wet the system is. So really, this question about water being wet is not really a completely scientific question. It actually has to do more with our usage of the word wet. But my point is that in order to be consistent with our language of wet, we have to say that water is for sure wet. That's the only way to do it. If water is not wet, then that means that we shouldn't say something is more wet when we put more water on it. But here's the caveat to this water is wet. You'll notice that as this graph goes up, it starts to asymptote and it never reaches 100% pure water because our system was always something plus water is making it wet. So tap water from your sink is not 100% pure water. It has some dissolved ions in it. It has some particulates in it. Even deionized water is not 100% pure water, although it's very, very, very close. But no matter how hard you try, in any real system in the world, you never actually have 100% pure water. So it actually doesn't matter on our plot that we never have 100% pure water. Whenever we talk about water or say the word water, there's always something in it. And that's why water is always wet. But for all the non-believers that water is wet, I will give you one little win here. If it were ever possible to get 100% pure water, that would actually be outside of the wetness scale because this wetness scale that I've drawn here, it asymptotes and it never actually reaches 100% pure water. And so because 100% pure water is never reached on the wetness scale, I would have to say if it were possible to get 100% pure water, it would not be called wet. But for any real life application, water is wet. 
Hey, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't just make some bitter enemies with this one. <laughs> But if you enjoyed this video and you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out, and leave me any questions that you have about this video or any comments in the comment section and I'll try to get to them. And I'll see you next time.